stress, fear, depression, spiritual warfare. Are you weighted down? Do you need refreshing? Welcome. Welcome everyone to the Warriors for Christ podcast, where we seek to uplift, edify, and encourage you to be light and salt in a dark and tasteless world with your host, Kyle. Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Warriors for Christ podcast. I'm Kyle. And I'm Sam. And we are delighted that you, our audience, are out there. You know, Sam, <laughs> the, uh, we were sitting before uh, before this episode, and, and we talked about what it was going to be about. And and it's, it's a serious topic. And, and it reminded me of about seven years ago when... I went to uh, went to church with my wife. I think it was on I think it was on one of the it might have been Mother's Day. I think she she convinced me to go with her on a Mother's Day. And you this was at the time when you had received your new heart and and um, I wasn't aware of those things. And you you came running over to me and and with joy you were like Kyle and you shared with me everything about what God had done in your life. And I was like I was like oh well that's awesome and shocking. And then you said. And you're probably a sinner too. And I was like, how did he, in, inside, I was like, how does he know? How does he know? And that's because you can't escape, cannot escape the eyes of the living God. He knows the truth. God sees everything, Kyle. He, he sees does. everything. Yep. He sees everything. And so that started me on a journey because I knew, I knew what was going on in my life. I, I had thought I, I was right with God. Uh, I had been baptized when I was nine years old. I came in front of the church and all of those things, was raised Baptist, you know. And, but but what happened to me didn't, at that time when I was nine, it didn't change my life. But when I was confronted with the truth that I was still a dirty sinner and that I needed to be changed and transformed, that started me on a journey. It took me five years to... Uh, eventually just break down and in desperation just cry out to the Lord that I needed to be changed, that I hated the man that I had become, that I was a I was a hypocrite and a fraud, and that I thought I knew the truth, but I was blind. And so this episode, as we talked about it, Sam, it strikes it, it strikes to a hard topic, a hard message. But the discipline of the Lord, when, when, when you're able to receive it in, right, in the right way, it's, it makes your path straight. And you come into the blessings of God. That's right. That's right. You come into the blessings of God. If you go astray, he will straighten it back out and get you on the straight path if you're humble and obedient. Yeah. And so... so and I, I've kind of hinted on what the topic of this is, but I'm going to do as we always do. I'm going to ask you to tell our audience, what is the subject of today's episode? So, Kyle, today's episode, which is Church in Action number six, is going to be a message about the you know, basic God's expectation for the leaders in the church and that there's consequences if we don't walk in whole-hearted obedience. Yep. And, and it's not just for church leaders. This this will this message applies to everybody. Specifically today, not just everybody, but um, because it is an example of pastor. I think of uh, you know Pastor Philip, Pastor Keenan, Pastor Austin, as God's preparing you to take your position of leadership in His church. Listen very intently as all these things that happen are for our instruction and for our edification to know that God does not change his ways. God does not change his expectations. God knows and sees everything. Pay attention. And we're to continue to be bold in faith. That's right. 
So that's what we're going to talk about today, Kyle. All right. With that, I'm going to open us in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you, O Lord God, for this time together. We thank you, O Lord God, for your mercy, your power. We thank you for your love. And in love, Lord, we lift up everyone that's out there right now listening. We pray that the message that's been delivered today is received as it's meant to re be received, and that is in love, as an example of your discipline, of your discipline of a son. And we pray, O oh Lord God, that that son comes into obedience, and picks up where he fell, and runs, and runs and completes the race in joy to receive all of the many things that you've prepared for him. Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask this. Amen. Amen. So today I'm going to go through uh, a list of examples of some of the dangers of where the devil's going to try to get a true Christian, a true spirit-filled man, to take his eyes off things above, to get distracted, and attempt to stumble. As a follower of Christ, as long as we continue to set our eyes on things above, we will not stumble. We will continue to overcome. That's right. The devil wants to deceive you and to get your eyes off the things of God and thinking that you can start to have thinking of the world along with thinking of God. That's not how it works. Beginning of the double mind. So yesterday I had to have a difficult conversation, instructed by God, of a discipline that God has handed down. A pastor was removed from his position. Now, it's not like what many people think of the world today, of, oh, this pastor was caught in this scandalous affair or some this or that or whatever. Nope. No, no, that's that's the things of the world. This one is is the things that actually matter truly to God. You see, God wants obedience to his voice, obedience to his instruction. He wants faith without doubting. He does not want worry. He does not want the fear of man. That is sin. That is no different than an adultery or, or, or other things. That's right. And so this pastor has been removed and will be in a season of humbling. I praise God that his life was not taken, that it was spared. You look at Ananias and Sapphira, they lost their life for disobedience. You look at King Saul, he had the Spirit of God removed from him in a, in a wicked spirit to terrorize him. I praise God that God had mercy that this did not happen to this pastor. This is simply a season of humbling. And I pray that the pastor, after he's been humbled and has learned, God will fill him with double the blessing that he planned beforehand. So let's go to the beginning. When this pastor came to the truth, I knew that it was going to be hard. I knew that as this pastor recently converted, and there's some pastors today that, that are going to be converting to the truth, you're going to be faced with the harsh reality of communicating a message to your congregation that's contrary to the message that has been passed down through all these ages of just the simple grace and God loves you and all this, but not understanding the true power of God and what why did Jesus died, what the power of God is supposed to do, right? Free us from sin so that we can now live holy, righteous lives, and what that true spiritual baptism means. Yeah. So, and unfortunately, Kyle, when you do that, there's a lot of people who have a profession in faith in Christ that, that we had, and, and it can be offensive when you tell somebody, well, actually, you know, you don't have the Spirit of God. The proof of God is not evidence in your life as God defines it. You still have sin in your life. That's right. They... That's the number one thing, people. So the first thing that happened with this pastor in the early, early beginning is the pastor was concerned and doubted the message about speaking against the church that he was currently pastoring. Now, now speaking he knew against that their it's sin. a false church. Speaking against their sin. But at right? the time, he believed it was the true church. When he came out of it, he now had to speak against it. And that concerned him. And he was anxious because you're going to speak against people who are providing your financial support. 
You're going to be speaking against people that you have a friendship with, telling them that you are not a Christian. You still serve the devil along with everybody who's born into the world as servants of the devil until they get a new heart and a new spirit. God spoke to this pastor audibly three times, told him not to worry, not to be afraid, and not to worry about his financial support. Audible voice, three times. The individual continued to have anxiousness and concern and did not wholly, was not wholly obedient to God. So God got out a discipline. Now, in this case, it wasn't the rod of discipline to bring him into sonship. He had come into sonship, but it was a rod of discipline because he was trying to stray from the straight and narrow path of not being wholly devoted to God. And so God struck him with a, a, a skin disease and a severe pain of the mouth to, so that it, he could not eat or drink. Now, in hindsight, as you look at that, you'd say, okay, well, what do you think somebody would do? You'd, you'd run to God. Well, this pastor ran to me. Normally, you'd say, okay, well, surely, Sam, they ran to you to ask for prayer. No, they, they ran to ask me for financial support so they could go to the hospital because they needed care quickly. Now, in the eyes of the world, Kyle, that's a normal thing to do, right? The, the world, if you're sick, if, if you got struck with some skin disease and you have this severe pain, you can't eat or drink, you know, naturally you would, you would go to the doctors of the world. But where's our faith in God? Amen. And not only that, immediately I was provoked in the spirit. I said to the pastor, I said, I cannot help you. I said, you're being disciplined because of your lack of obedience. You cannot have any doubt or anxiousness, right? You can't have that. Being punished for your disobedience, so, your lack of obedience. I said, I could give you all the money in the world. I could send you to, the, to every, the best doctor in the world. I said, when God's hand is against you for disobedience, no man is going to be able to deliver you from God's hand. There's only one solution. You have to humble yourself and repent. This pastor was obedient. He humbled himself, repented. I prayed the following uh, time that we met. And he was healed. All, that, all of it was removed. And what people need to understand is that you guys communicate three times a week at least. Yes. I think this one was immediately the following day. Yep. Now, God just doesn't cast you out, okay, so you got your eyes taken off things above. But the problem is, if you let it become a pattern, well, it can get worse. God blessed this pastor. This pastor was speaking the truth, started to walk in obedience. God was blessing and working with signs, wonders, and miracles and the life of this pastor. People were amazed at the work that was being done, the power of God being manifested, people giving heed to the words of this new message, this message with authority, with power, to accomplish the works of God and to free people from sin, to cast out demons, to heal, to find favor in the eyes of political leaders. Kyle, things were going well. Yep. Other blessings. God blessed this pastor with a new home, fully paid for. Vehicle transportation. Blessed him with land, food, water, funds. Business. Just as it businesses, all this God provided. So that he wouldn't have to worry. So he wouldn't have to worry, just as God said he would provide. 
But as all things, God lets temptations and tests come. You know, it's one of the things about the proof of a faith. For those who have listened, and we've covered it before. Let's go there. You know what book I'm going to. Yes, I do. I'm going to the book of James. Yep. And Peter after it, right? In the book of James. James chapter 1, verse 2, imperative. It says, Consider it all joy, my brethren, when you encounter various trials or temptations, knowing that the proof of your faith is producing endurance. Did you just catch that? Yeah. You see, the proof of a faith produces an endurance. That's right. It if you don't have work. a proof of faith, it, it doesn't endure. When the, when the trial or the temptation comes, you find yourself, yourself failing, not enduring. But you see, a proof of a faith, as it says in verse 4, an endurance must be having its what kind of result, Kyle? Perfect result. Perfect result. So that you're what kind of a man? So that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. Lacking in nothing. Lacking in nothing. But God's serious about the whole doubting thing. Yep. What does he say about doubting? But if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives it to all generously without reproach. And it will be given to him. But he must ask in faith without any doubting. For the one who doubts is like the surf of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. Now, we've heard about the person that was driven and tossed by the wind, haven't we, Sam? We have. When you're driven and tossed by the wind, we covered that in uh, Church in Action um, Episode five. 5 with a message to Barbara. And uh, children, that's the people who are infants yep. who are deceived and haven't yet received the Spirit of God and being tossed back in here, uh, you know, back and forth by waves. And, and really, it's the false teaching. Yep. It's all the false teaching. Uh, the other thing about worry uh, and doubting, uh, I want to read a passage from Matthew. In Matthew chapter 6. Kyle, if you will read verse 25 to verse 34. For this reason I say to you, do not be worried about your life as to what you will eat or what you will drink, nor for your body as to what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air, that they do not sow, nor reap, nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not worth much more than they? And you, who of you, be, by being worried, can add a single hour to his life? And why are you worried about clothing? Observe how the lilies of the field grow. They do not toil, they do not spin. Yet I say to you that not even Solomon in all his glory clothed himself like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the furnace, will he not much more clothe you? You little of faith! Do not worry then, saying, What will we eat, or what will we drink, or what will we wear for clothing? For the Gentiles eagerly seek all these things. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek first. I'm going to repeat that. Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. And all these things will be added to you. So do not worry about for tomorrow. For tomorrow will care for itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. That's right. And, you know, Kyle, when you look at this, he says we aren't to be worried about our life. And then he defines about different aspects. Food, drink, water, clothing. He says, why are you worried about that? Isn't your life and your body more important? 
Does not God take care of the birds? He feeds them. Aren't you worth more than they? You think about that. It really comes down to your faith. Do you really trust and rely upon your heavenly father? Now, and that's the thing. The devil, the devil, you know, a man who's been spirit filled and all sin has been cleansed out. What the devil tries to do is, is bring sin in. And it's not the normal sin that we think of. You know, the, the false church, you'll have pastors that, that, Will, will like fall into all these things, and and it's not just fall into it; they're living it. The the the, the lust, the desires, they it's in their heart. To begin it was with. never cleansed. It was they were never fully truly free. Yeah. But a man of God who's been cleansed, you live holy, you live godly. You know the devil really has to do a good trick to to, to try to trap you into something. And one of the common things, that's why I think Jesus talked about this the most, because this is probably the most common. It's simple things, needs of the world. Mm-hmm. Well, the gee, how am I going to get food, right? What how am I going to get clothing? What are you going to drink? What are you going to wear? That's right. And so God then equates it to grass. It just burns up and dies. He says, you a little faith. Why are you worrying? And he says, doesn't the world seek those things? The world, referring to the wicked world, just referring to Gentiles, they seek those things. Don't you know that your father knows that you need those things? No, Kyle, he tells us what we're to be seeking. That's right. Seek his kingdom. Seek his righteousness. His kingdom and his righteousness. That's right. That's all you need. Don't worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow will care for itself. You know, Jesus spoke on this topic more than once. Mm. Um, Again, in Luke chapter 12... When he talked about worry, and this this again is after the um, uh, the one that we just read in Matthew uh, chapter six that I think we were in that was from the Sermon on the Mount. Uh, as you keep going on later uh, in in Luke, you have another example about you know the wor- uh, worry, and in this case it's after the Sermon on the Mount in Luke, and. We'll turn to that. Luke 12. Yep. Uh, Luke chapter 12. Kyle, if you will read verse, we'll start in uh, verse 4 through, why don't we go through verse 12. Okay. I say to you, my friends, do not be afraid of those who kill the body, and after that have no more that they can do to you. But I will warn you whom to fear. Fear the one who, after he has killed, has authority to cast into hell. Yes, I tell you, fear him. So to pause right there. Here we have an example of the fear of a harm by man or authorities. He says, you're right. Man, they can cause a consequence. Kyle, what does God say the worst thing that man can do to you? Kill the body. Kill the body. They can kill the earthly body. That's it. But Jesus says, fear somebody greater. Yep. The Father, our eternal Father, That's God. Right. Because can God do something beyond just killing your physical body? That's right. He has the authority to cast into hell. That's right. He has the authority to cast into hell. Uh, keep reading. Are not five sparrows sold for two cents, yet not one of them is forgotten by God? Indeed, the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Do not fear. You are more valuable than many sparrows. And I say to you, everyone who confesses me before man, the Son of Man will confess him also before the angels of God. But he who denies me before men will be denied before the angels of God. And everyone who speaks a word against the Son of Man it will be forgiven him, but he who blasphemes against the Holy Spirit, it will not be forgiven him. When they bring you before the synagogues and the rulers and the authorities, do not worry about how or what you are to speak in your defense or what you are to say. For the Holy Spirit will teach you in that very hour what you ought to say. If you worried, pastors, about preaching the truth in the churches and the synagogues, 
You worrying about what to say? Don't worry. That's right. Don't worry. Do and, not worry. And as you keep reading, right, about being worry, uh, he then goes on and talks about people who are trying to store up for themselves. Um, read about the parable starting in verse 16 about the rich man. And he told them a parable saying, The land of a rich man was very productive. And he began reasoning to himself, saying, What shall I do since I have no place to store my crops? Then he said, This is what I will do. I will tear down my barns and build larger ones. And there I will store all my grain and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, you have many goods laid up for many years to come. Take your ease. Eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, You fool, this very night your soul is required of you, and now who will own what you have prepared? So is the man who stores up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. You know, Kyle, right there to pause that, that's another thing. When God starts to bless you, one of the temptations that you could fall into is start to become prideful. That's right. And kind of start thinking that, oh, gee, I get to just now boast and live luxuriously in this lifestyle and not realizing, it. no, 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 you, you are all commanded the more to continue to strive and labor fervently for the kingdom of God and to suffer for it. We did the episode of what the true grace of God is and to suffer for it. Not to think that life is now going to be full of pe pleasant trees and jollies. No, God will give blessing. You know, he gives us spiritual blessing, but many times he gives us physical blessings as well. Yep, material blessings. N not to escape the difficulties of this world, not to escape the difficulties of exposing the lying false church, not not the difficulties of facing persecution. You don't get to just all of a sudden live this life of what the, the trap of the, the traditional church pastor lives. Eat, drink, and be merry. No, no, that's not how it is. As you keep going, what does he say about worrying about uh, food and life and other things as you keep reading? For life is more than food, in verse 23, and the body more than clothing. Consider the ravens, for they neither sow nor reap. They have no storeroom nor barn, and yet God feeds them. How much more valuable you are than the birds. And which of you, by worrying, could add a single hour to his lifespan? If then you cannot do even a very little thing, why do you worry about other matters? Consider the lilies, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin, but I tell you, not even Solomon in all his glory clothed himself like one of these. But if so, if God so clothes the grass in the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the furnace, how much more will he clothe you, you men of little faith? And do not seek what you will eat and what you will drink, and do not keep worrying. For all these things the nations of the world eagerly seek. But your Father knows that you need these things. Here we go, Sam. But seek his kingdom, and these things will be added to you. Do not be afraid, little flock, for your Father has chosen gladly to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give to charity. Make yourselves money belts which do not wear out an unfailing treasure in heaven where no thief comes near nor moth destroys. So again, that, that's just a lot of truth. God says, hey, listen, do not worry. Worry is a sin. Worry is doubting yep. God. It's that's not right. trusting God. So uh, this pastor, he, he has all this blessing. Now, troubles continue to happen. Difficulties continue to occur. And what ended up happening is... Some of the blessing that this pastor had was managed into a deficit. And some of the things that were given and, and the things of the world, the talents of the world, were mismanaged. Uh, the businesses went into basically bankruptcy, failure to be self-sufficient. Because the fear of out of the things of need 
instead of trusting God, going to God, well, we'll just continue to spend, spend, spend until it's all gone. These things weren't communicated. God is the one who wants to be relied upon. God is the one who wants the trust to be upon, not continuing to, to just run to the easy button solution of the world, which was done and there was mismanagement. So as this went on, God gave instructions and those were passed to this pastor. This pastor is going to have to go and get a job and to go get income in the world. This pastor had other questions. When I went and inquired through the prophet that God has put into my life, the clear answer was, have Daniel go to the man named Ezekiel, who he knows, and have that man pray and get his answer. He will reveal the answers as the prophet of God to Daniel, or to the pastor. And the pastor never did that. God was specific. God gave an instruction to command. Go to the man, Ezekiel, inquire, and have him pray, and get your answer from me. The pastor did not obey. Again, another step of disobedient. Now, during this time, the pastor was continuing to go to proclaim the truth, to serve, to minister, to cast out demons, to do healings. So it wasn't like this pastor was just like, oh, I'm not going to do anything. I mean, this pastor was doing a to- hundred times more and was truly serving God in his kingdom than all these false pastors today. But the problem is God requires much. God gives much. He gives the fullness deity of his spirit. He gives the power. He gives his promise upon his people. Cannot doubt in disobedience. So, then another test came. One, God convicted me and had me speak to the pastor to say, listen, You need to stop preaching like the false church. You preach the full word of God. The word of God explains itself. Do not go and get trapped into these these false things of you share a verse and tell stories. I said, that's not preaching God's word. The spirit of God was getting provoked within me. The tendency is to go back to things of the world. And that was one of the things. This pastor grew up. See, I, I never had that, that burden or struggle to deal with because I didn't grow up in the church. But though those things were to be cast out and trampled, they were all false. Uh, this pastor continued to, I believe, cling to some of those things. And so that started to become a stumbling block and a snare, and it was angering God. The individual had a focus, the pastor, on feeling like, well, I need more technology. No, you don't. God doesn't need technology. If he wants it, he'll use it. If not, don't try to push a man's solution. Again, not fully trusting in God. Not listening to the instruction that was provided by God's servant to the pastor, instructing him on what to do. Angering God further. Another challenge came along with the dispute of the deed of this pastor's property where a wicked of the world was trying to steal it from him in the house that his his house was on. The pastor did what most people of the world do. I'll go to the judge. I'll go to the clerk. I'll work through the wicked ways of man to solve my problems. Well, sometimes we do have to do that, Kyle. But you first run to God. That's right. So this pastor chose to try to solve all these things in secrecy and not bring it to the attention to support intervention to God. It finally came up when it became a much bigger issue. And when I found out, Kyle, what was the first thing that I did? Seek, did I go and, and get a lawyer and seek worldly wisdom or counsel? No, you asked me to go and, and pray and seek what the Lord would have him do. I went to, to the prophet of the God situation. in my life, which is Kyle. I said, Kyle, ask God what he wants done. 
Kyle, was God specific in his answer? It was very specific. God no was very detailed, specific of how he wanted this resolved. Mm-hmm. And it required going back and engaging the wicked man who started all this mess. Mm -hmm. So I went to the pastor and gave him clear instruction from God on what to do. The pastor said, no, you cannot do that. That will not work. It won't work. Is it what he will said. not work. It will not work. I tried that. I said, no, no, it will work. This is what... No, no, it will not work. I had to press and persevere and prevail upon the pastor. Because Kyle, you know me. God says something. Kyle, I'm not going to walk in disobedience. That's right. Over my dead body, uh, we will do what God said. That's right. He hasn't let us down, Sam. He has not. <laughs> so, God's word prevailed. And lo and behold, Kyle, would you imagine that when the pastor went and walked in obedience to the instructions that I gave him from God, what do you think happened? He got settlement. Exactly as God said. Yep. Exactly as God said. Matter was settled. Now, you know, some people, when they try to do things through the ways of the world and not in obedience to God, sometimes you lose. You look at the different times in Israel, they lost their battles. And then the prophet of God would come along and say, well, you need to do this. And all of a sudden they go to the same, same, same wicked army, and all of a sudden they rout them. Yeah. The question is, who are you trusting in? But yet Israel, they always thought they were trusting God. Pastor, this pastor, he thought he was trusting God, but it wasn't in total obedience. So after that, again, I think I shared about the pastor was instructed, as God instructed, go get a job. This pastor was complacent on that. I don't think he fully, truly believed that that was really necessary, and that those were the direct words of God. So, action was not taken. No job was found. Next thing you know, the individual, the pastor, was struck with a sickness. Do you think the pastor came and revealed and disclosed it and asked for prayer? Nope. As the Bible commands in James chapter 5? That's right. No, but he did not. the pastor did not come in obedience, and we'd already covered those passages before. The pastor knew the answer, but didn't walk in it. And Sam, the Lord pressed it on your heart. And so God pressed it upon my heart and revealed there is an issue and there is a sickness. Yep. But Kyle, God didn't tell me the exact sickness when I asked, and he also didn't tell me the cause, but I knew there was something wrong. So Kyle, what do you think I did? What do you think the first thing that I did? It's kind of becoming a pattern here. It is becoming a pattern because the true church works together. Eyes get to see and ears get to hear and the mouth gets to speak and the arms get to lift and the legs get to walk. And do I, I and go and I inquire of God. Sam goes and inquires of the prophet to go pray to God to ask the, what's going on. So I went to the, the, the man of God in my life who God has gifted with the gift of prophecy I said, Kyle, I need you to go before God. I don't know exactly what the problem is, but you need to go and inquire about what is going on with his life. And God confirmed. He confirmed the sickness. He told you what it was, and he told you why. Yep. He told you why. Yep. And the problem was the, the fear and the anxiousness of man. Yep. Fearing man over fearing God. So, armed with that information, I went, and love, I confronted the pastor. I say, what's going on? And the pastor was a little startled, but God knows all things. Yeah. And he confirmed that everything that God had revealed, that was true, which I expected. God doesn't lie. He's always going to speak the truth. And so, the pastor, I told him, you have to repent. So up until this time, I think it hit the last straw, and, and I, my spirit continued to be provoked more and more each time yeah. as the, the true dependency upon God seemed to continue to dwindle, and the dependency and the running of man or depending on man seemed to increase. And just as my spirit was being provoked within me, I know God was being extremely provoked. Yeah. And so... It happened. God clearly communicated to his prophet 
that God was making a change. God had appointed a new man to take that position. And now this pastor has given instruction. He's given go get instruction to go get purchase wine, unleavened bread, olive oil. And now, even though they're in a remote location, God has brought three other men. The man he has chosen to be my hands in the anointing process when these men are anointed is not the original first pastor. It should have been. But that pastor is now being put through a season of humbling. Yep, discipline. It's another man. And that man is going to lay his hands on another man in my presence as I'm there with as I'm there with him in spirit. Yep. To anoint as I pray and prophesy and speak over their life, as God's going to pour out his spirit on these men as we go through in unison of prayer and anointing. In communion together. And God has already communicated to you, through the prophet, to me, which gift each man is going to be given. Yep. And I'm looking forward to that. Yep. Now, my heart is still with the original pastor. We still have the same spirit. Uh, My love and my concern for him, right, as with all those who are in the body of Christ, that does not change. As a matter of fact, God had prophesied earlier that there would be a stumble. Yeah, and that, that I would be there as you instructed to pick up. This was almost two years ago. And to help restore this man to get him running again. Yep. And so I'm confident as this pastor accepts the position of humility continues to turn and focus his trust on God and purge himself of this uh, doubt and anxiety and worry and anxiousness that has crept in, that God will restore. Yeah. But I wanted to share this, Kyle, because it's a lot of people and the church, people don't see how the church is supposed to act, the standards that God has set. Yeah, but they don't change. Standard. This is all consistent with the old and the new. Yep. God's specificity, what he requires, how he communicates, he it wants, hasn't changed. That's right. He wants obedience. He wants us to seek his kingdom. And what? Then seek the second one. And his righteousness. And his righteousness. That cannot be forgotten, folks. That's a high standard. So that is what I wanted to talk about today, to give some practical application that God still works. So, for those uh, three men, uh, other three men, so there's there's three men that I'm going to be, um, actually four men I'm going to be praying over because it's also going to be the original pastor. Um, one of those is a Pastor Philip. So, Pastor Philip, this is this instruction and all this example is for your example. Yeah. Uh, pastor Austin, Pastor Keenan that God has called you and will soon be placing you into this pastoral role. Mm -hmm. Be mindful of everything that you've heard today. And all those who are listening, God expects the same out of his children. Sin is sin. If you have worry, if you have doubt, know that that is not from the Heavenly Father. If you were never free from that, then I would challenge whether or not you were ever purged and cleansed of all sin and baptized by the Spirit of God and the power of God. If you were cleansed and were free from all those things, completely gone, and they have crept back into your life, well, I'm going to caution you because there's going to be a consequence just as there is a consequence with this pastor. Turn and repent now to limit the consequence. In other places, God has taken the life of people. In other places, God has removed his spirit and given an evil spirit. I pray that that doesn't happen. But yes. God is serious about his work. God doesn't play games. The fear of the Lord is something to be of reverence and respect. Ooh. Beginning of wisdom. So that's all I have, Kyle. All right. Well, um, Would you like to close us in prayer too? I will. Father, I thank you. 
Father, I thank you that you have the promise and the blessing that we can come to you. Father, that you can free us from all things by which, through the law and the world, we could not be freed from. Be freed from sin. To live a godly, holy, and righteous life. Free from worry and doubt, as you say, the the man who doubts is a double-minded man who will receive nothing from the Lord. We'll be free from worry because we put our trust and hope in you. As Jesus said, if you want to be my disciple, are you willing to lose your life? If you aren't willing to lose life, then you are not going to be able to find life to eternity. Father, I pray that people see that, that they understand it, and that they know that you have not changed your ways, you have not changed how you discipline. You still have high expectations because what else would you expect when you fill somebody with all the deity of God that now dwells within them? Father, I pray that this is a blessing. Expose the lies of the devil. Let your truth stand and shine. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you enjoyed the program, consider subscribing and sharing with your friends. Thanks for listening.